Hello guys, how are we all doing? Welcome back to yet another video. Today we are back ranking the Championship Away fans that visited Coventry, the CBS Arena, this season. Now I will say I'm a season ticket holder. I got to every single home game, so I have a good angle in which to judge this. What I will say is to the other Coventry fans that are watching this, let me know if you disagree down below. I'm sure we've all got our different versions of what we've thought of the away fans that have visited this season. And if you're an away fan, that did visit or if your club visited let me know what you thought of the CBS and what you thought of Coventry fans when we came to your place. I've put them in order of which they came to the CBS from the start of the season till the end and you can see there they're either going to go in the class tier, the great tier, the decent tier or the bad tier. Just before we get into this video guys make sure to drop it a big thumbs up let's go for 100 likes make sure you've hit that red subscribe button down below go down and subscribe to the channel as we try and reach 11,000 subs. Let's start with Nottingham Forest then who we played on the opening day and you know what it was just a great day all round obviously not the best ending for the Forest fans because Coventry did win it was the first time we scored a last minute winner a 96th minute winner the Forest fans though were brilliant they brought 3,800 which is in the top five most numbers to come to CB the CBS this season and Forrest were loud they were proud it's just a shame for them that when they visited it was under Chris Hewton because they lost this game but regardless their fans were class Next up, we're going to go to Reading, the second team to visit. And the thing is, when you're playing a team in August, the sun is out. It's not terrible conditions. Reading really should have brought more than what they did. They brought 1,300. It's not terrible numbers, but because we've seen so many great numbers, I'm sorry, Reading. I'm going to slide you into the bad tier. It's just not very impressive at that time of year to bring that many fans. And once again, Coventry scored a last-minute winner in that game. Next up, we have the Middlesbrough fans. Now, Middlesbrough, you've got to say were very, very good. They brought 2,700, which is a great number of fans considering how far away Middlesbrough is from Coventry. I'm torn here. Middlesbrough going one of the top two tiers. Oh, I don't want to overload the top tier just yet. So I'm going to put Middlesbrough in great. Their fans were loud. They were passionate, as you'd expect. They, once again, were another team that came and lost. But um, yeah, their fans were great regardless. Next up, Cardiff City. Now, this was our first midweek game at home in the championship. Cardiff brought about 1,400, which is pretty good. Once again, it's a two-hour journey or so. I think we took similar numbers when we went away to them on a Tuesday night. Because there's been much bigger numbers, I will have to slide Cardiff into... Do you know what? They've still been... They were still decent. They made some good noise. I'll put them in decent. I remember one chant they just kept singing was football's coming Rome because obviously they're Welsh and we'd just lost in the Euros final, which was a bit annoying. But yeah, some good chants, um, some good numbers. I'll put them in decent. Next up are Peterborough United. And do you know what? They surprised me a bit. I thought Peterborough would have one of the worst supports to come to the CBS, but they were still decent. They brought 1,600 on a Friday night on Sky I think it was uh, it might not have been on TV actually thinking about it I think there was another game on that night but regardless great numbers I'm going to put Peterborough in do you know what they were decent they were very decent next up's Fulham now Fulham ugh, this is a tricky one because it was an early kickoff and it was on Sky TV which obviously does put a few fans off but regardless you look at them they're a Premier League club they were always going to get promoted and they brought under 2,000. So I was a bit disappointed from that perspective considering the size of clubs. So for that, I'm going to say Fulham were not good. I'm going to put Fulham in the lowest tier. Obviously, congratulations on their promotion, but they're not some of the best fans we've seen this season. Next up are Derby County. Now, they brought 3,500. Once again, that's a lot of numbers. Derby's not particularly far away. I will factor that in, but their fans were super passionate. And I think that's why Derby did so well in the first half of the season. Their fans were right behind them. They were right behind the court. There was a bit of trouble between the Coventry and Derby fans. I'm not here to point fingers. The majority of Derby fans were obviously brilliant and I'm going to put them in class. I'm sure they'll be one of the best supported teams in League One. Uh, Derby, yeah, it was loads of fans. Uh, next up, Swansea City. Once again, annoying for the, another Welsh team having to come on a Tuesday night. They were the first team to come and win at the CBS. Fair play to them. They didn't uh, bring even a 1,000, though. They brought 850, but you consider the journey. It's about three hours. That's pretty good support. I'll put them in decent. Next up are Bristol City. Bristol City brought under 3,000. Um, it's about a two-hour journey. It was on a Saturday. Their fans were pretty good. I remember them getting a bit negative and toxic when they lost late on. Obviously, they were playing against us with 10 men, so that wasn't very good for them. 
Um, it's still great support, though. You consider the numbers and the noise they made. Bristol City have to go in great. Next up are Birmingham City. Now, I can look at this in two ways. Birmingham brought loads of numbers, as you'd expect them to. It's only down the road. They brought 4,000, and to be honest, they take thousands everywhere. They've got some of the best away support in the league. The annoying thing that took away a bit of the atmosphere from the home and away fans for this game was the fact it was a nil-nil draw. If this was a 2-2 draw or Birmingham won, they'd have been louder. But regardless of the fact they didn't make as much noise as some other fans, the numbers were still brilliant for a nil-nil draw and everything. So Birmingham are going to have to go in class. Next up are West Bromwich Albion. This one's quite easy for me. In fact, they brought the biggest amount of numbers this season. They brought 4,400, which is an incredible amount of support from the Baggies. This was when both of us were in the playoffs. It was quite an interesting game, this. They did win, and they were some of the best in terms of noise as well as numbers. So West Bromwich Albion are going in class. They were just singing the Lord is my shepherd and all their chants and it was yeah great support. Next up are Millwall. This was an evening game around New Year. Now we're getting into the time of the season where the numbers go down a little bit because it's cold, it's dark, it's rainy, it's all not very good conditions for travelling away. But Millwall still brought 1,000 fans which is very decent. Uh, made a bit of noise and they came away with a 1-0 win as well. I'll put Millwall's fans in decent. I know at home and on other away days they can go in the other two tiers. But for when they came to Coventry, I'll slide them in decent. Next up, Queen's Park Rangers. Maybe the biggest surprise to me because they also brought 4,000 fans. Now, they were in a very good place at the time. If we'd have played them in April or May when things were going wrong, they might not have brought as many, but I'm not going to take anything away from them. They brought loads, they made great noise, and they also came away with a win. This is when Coventry weren't being as good at home anymore. Um, QPR have to go in class. I was really, really taken by the amount of numbers and the noise they made. Next up are Stoke City. Stoke brought 2,000 fans. It was a rearranged game. I think they'd have brought more if it wasn't rearranged. It would have been on a Saturday. It got moved to a Tuesday. Uh, but still good numbers. Fair play to the fans that did come. Didn't make the most noise this season, but they weren't bad. Uh, it was a bit of a flat game, actually. I'll put Stoke in decent. Next up are Blackpool. Now, this one is interesting. I'm going to factor in the noise they've made more than the numbers on this occasion because Blackpool brought nearly a 1,000, but they were chanting all game long and they were super passionate. They went mental when their goal went in. And do you know what? They kept the atmosphere really going in that game. It was a 1-1 draw, not the best game as well. So fair play to Blackpool. Based on atmosphere and noise, I'm going to put them in class. I think they've made a real good name for themselves this season on the road. Next up are Barnsley. Um, I'm sorry, Barnsley. Not a good season. I can understand why some of the fans didn't go to all the games. Uh, it was the lowest numbers we've seen at the CBS in the championship. 600 away fans. So inevitably, I'm sorry, but that's bad. Next up are Preston North End. I was a bit surprised by Preston, to be honest. I thought they might bring 2,000 or so, but they brought 2,600 and they made some good noise and there was so much drama in that game. I think their fans played a vital part in that. It was a really good atmosphere between the two teams. I'm going to put Preston in great. Next up are Luton Town. Luton brought 2,000 or so for a midweek game, which is really, really good. They're going to have to go in one of the top two tiers. Um, Luton, as a club, you've got to say, they're competing with some big clubs with much bigger fan bases here. So the fans that came, I was really, really surprised. And they made some great noise. I'm going to put Luton in great. There you go. Next up is Sheffield United. Now, obviously, when they came into this game, it was like 6th versus 8th. It was a really big game. Um, they obviously lost. We won that game. But um, I remember a flare going off when they scored. They got the first goal and uh, they brought like 4,000 fans. So despite them losing and being fairly quiet for the second half, based on numbers and noise they made in the first half, I'm going to have to shove Sheffield United in class as well. I'm really being nice here. But to be honest, what this does go to show is how good the away support has been from a lot of clubs this season. I think fans being back is playing a vital part in that. Obviously, we had a couple seasons off with COVID. Next up are Hull City and maybe underrated in away. I'm not going to put them in bad at all. They did bring under a thousand, but they made a bit of noise. They came away with the win. It was probably a very decent away day for the fans that did come. Um, but yeah, it's, it's two and a half hour journey on a wet, cold Tuesday night in February or March or whatever it was. Um, I'll put Hull City in decent, you know. 
Next up, Blackburn Rovers. Blackburn were pretty decent. They brought at least 2,000 and they made a bit of noise. A really entertaining game, 2-2 draw. We actually drew both of our games against Blackburn 2-2 this season. I think we were brilliant when we went to Blackburn. We took about 4,000 and like I say, when they came to us, they brought about 2,000. Fair play to the fans that did come. I'm going to put Blackburn in great. Next up at AFC Bournemouth. Now, they actually come in for a bit of criticism for the size of club they are and their fan base or whatever. But I've got to say, when they came to Coventry, they were very, very decent. They were second or third going into that game with a couple games to go. They absolutely tonked us on the pitch 3-0. I think they're the team that came away with the biggest win at the CBS this season. And their fans really enjoyed it. They made a bit of noise. Um, it's about 2,000 odd Bournemouth fans. So fair play to them. They're going to have to go in great. Well done Bournemouth fans and well done on promotion. The last team are Huddersfield Town. Now they came pretty much knowing it was a nothing game because Huddersfield were already in the playoffs. The automatics had practically gone, but they are on a high and they brought about 3,000 odd fans, which is just incredible. I've got to say Huddersfield made quite a bit of noise and because of the numbers as well, I'm going to end by putting Huddersfield Town also in class. So then guys, that wraps up today's video. I've been very generous there, but I think that is due to the fact that fans are back and they've made a lot of noise and they've made the effort to get to a lot of games this season. I wonder if numbers will go down maybe a little bit next season or they could go up for some clubs based on how they've performed this season. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Make sure you've dropped a like. Make sure you've hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.